Ladies and gentlemen, Connie Sands is about to come on and rock the house talking about a hot money relationship. We're going to dive into all that juicy goodness. Before we dive in, let's talk to you out there because you are becoming your greatest possible self. I want to support you however I can, whether that's coming on the 12 hour marathon as a guest and getting your message out, whether that is becoming a one on one coaching client to get more clarity, to break through your BS and your resistance, stop procrastinating, stop playing small, and step into your greatness. I love doing that too. And when you're ready to launch your own podcast and platform, I'm here to support you in doing that and playing a much, much bigger game. So let's do it. You can contact me, email chris at beyourgps.com, Facebook dot com forward slash th3 burns and instagram at i am millionaire chris would love to hear from you and looking forward to growing on the journey together next up is the itunes review of the week and let's see who it's by this week it's by helped me shed my layers chris is an inspiring breath of fresh air. This podcast will enlighten and encourage even the thickest skin of us to shed the tough exterior and dive deeply inward. Yes, we do. That's who we are. We go deep here and we are about to blow the roof off the place. And we do that with your support. So stay tuned. Definitely subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts at, Apple Podcasts or uh, iHeartRadio or Stitcher or um, there's a bunch of other, Spotify, all, all these great places where you can listen to Google Podcasts, wherever you get them, subscribe so you can get all the latest updates and make sure you get episodes like Connie's and many, many more, all so amazing. So definitely stay subscribed. And if you want to get shouted out on a future 12-hour marathon as a review, definitely go to iTunes and search Greatest Possible Self. Give us a review and you'll have a chance at being shouted out. I'm going to bring Connie on in just a second. And before I do that, I want you to grab a piece of paper. I want you to grab a pen because she's going to be sharing some powerful exercises with you to help you truly transform, revolutionize, shift, up level, and re recreate. You know, really totally from a whole new perspective, recreate your relationship with money. So stay tuned. It's going to be an epic interview. You're going to love it. And let's introduce Connie, and then we'll bring her on the screen. Connie Sands is a wealth coach to women, a.k.a. the badass bag lady, who's always been intrigued by how women relate to their money, the good and the bad. Connie likes to show women how they're in a money relationship and have been since their very first luscious paycheck. Women are all about relationships. It's in their DNA. So recognizing this relationship and showing their money, the love, is emotionally satisfying, life-enhancing, and fabulously empowering. Other partners may come or may go, but money is the one partner that will always have your back if you show it the love. Connie helps women get rid of money fears and doubts and find their hidden money confidence. Personal connection and showing their money, the TLC, tender love and care, is what puts the hot into a money relationship. The thought of helping women break through their money blocks is what excites Connie. It's a mission that never gets old. With her wellspring of money life experience, real life resources, and sense of fun, she's here to shake up your relationship with money while making it less nerve wracking and uncomfortable and helping you grab more money confidence. When she's not writing, creating, or speaking, you can find Connie indulging in exploring her new hometown of San Diego, seeing fascinating art house films. And every blue moon, she is on a plane to Paris, Mexico, or Rome. Here's to a whole new adventure. And make sure you visit Connie at www.hotmoneyrelationship.com. And we are going to dive into an amazing interview. Connie, are you ready to rock the house, Superwoman? I certainly am. I am here. Oh, <laughs> You <I> are here. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. We're going to have so much fun. This is a needed and necessary and so powerful topic that our women and men, I'm sure, can get some enlightenment from by sticking around in this conversation. So thank you for being here, Connie. And we're going to dive right into the theme, which is the power of words. So how has this concept, the power of words, how has it impacted you, Connie? Well, you know, the power of words is 
immense because, mm -hmm. you know, the Buddha said, you know, with our thoughts, you know, we form our own world and that's what we do with our thoughts. So, you know, we need to be able to articulate, we need to be able to actually find that heart's desire. And there are so many things that intentionally or not intentionally are, are walls that we are not able to, don't think we're able to, but we have to cross in order to access those dreams that are in us. There are diamonds. They're the diamonds that are within our heart and soul that have to be accessed because you only get one time round. You know, I'm 73 years old. I'm a 73 wow. years old. You're freaking radiant, Connie. You are yeah. radiant. Oh, thank you. And, you know, so I've been around. I've been around the block once or 57 times. So I'm telling you from <laughs> my vantage point that you have no time to waste in wow. identifying the, the heart's desires and dreams, those wild and crazy money dreams that you have, and getting moving to making them come true because this is your life. Any dissatisfaction that you have right now with the way that your, your personal life, your money life, Mm -hmm. uh, the dreams that are not fulfilled in your life, that dissatisfaction is a message, a sign from within you saying, I have to make changes, you know, or I'm going to be miserable in one of these areas or all of them. So it's just critical. It's not like, oh, you know, I'll wait and do something. You know, one day you're going to wake up and be 73 years old. Do you want to have not have done everything you wanted to do by now. I mean, I'm still creating a journey, you know, but let me tell you a little bit about, um, about hot money relationship, because I think that that's something that, you know, people wonder, well, what the heck is she talking about? You know, <laughs> but a relationship with your money is like the relationship you have with any other person. Mm -hmm. And that means that if you have a relationship with someone, even if it's your, your fur baby, if you looked at your little fur baby and said, I love you, fur baby, but I'm never going to look at you. I love you, fur baby, but I'm never going to touch you. Mm. I love you, fur baby, but I'm not going to pay any attention to you until I really feel like I need to. Uh, and I'm never, I'm never going to interact with you. So, you know, that's a relationship with your fur baby. What about your relationship with a partner, with a spouse, or, or with a, an adult child? Yeah. You know, if you're if you're not in, if you're not committed to that relationship, with feel, touch, uh, listening, communicating, um, what's going to happen to the relationship? Mm. Not much. And in fact, it could it could really become disastrous. So the relationship with your money is especially for women. I know it's especially it's it's important for men as well. Um, but I talk to women about this because we start off at a disadvantage. You know, I worked for many years in corporate America without realizing that I was uh, being shortchanged by 20 percent. Wow. You know, 20% of, of 44 years of working adds up to a lot of money. Mm. And so we have to pay attention. That's part of our relationship with our money. Yep. You know, and so we, if we're not paying attention to that, where are we going to make up that other 20%? Mm. You know, how are we going to do this? You know, there's, and yes, I'm not, I'm, I'm always going to keep this real because, mm. uh, I'm, I'm a person who keeps it real. I like to have fun, but I also like to keep it real because that's in service to, to the people I work with. Yeah. And that is, yes, you're going to have to do some soul searching. You're going to have to look inside and do some of the inner work required. So, Because what happens? Women are socialized. Women are socialized from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When it comes to money and abundance and prosperity, uh, to be servants, really, to be servants. Uh, you are always second or third or fourth or fifth or down at the bottom of the totem pole. So what does that do to the way that you perceive your world in terms of abundance and, and so forth? Um, and that means that you become afraid to ask for more. Mm. You become afraid of even asking 
you you wind up being a people pleaser and a servant to other people's desires, to their dreams, and and working toward what they need and want. And and you're on the back burner. You're on the back burner at all times in your life unless you step forward. Um, one of the things that uh, I find interesting is that no matter how much money a woman makes, women, women, uh, there's been um, uh, surveys done, and women who are earning 250k and above are usually very frightened and scared of not having enough. Wow. And I'll give you a quote from a woman who made it huge a long time ago. She is won an Academy Award, she's a great singer, been around forever, and, you know, icon, you know, of, of rock and roll. And she said, uh, you know, I'm scared to death of being poor. Mm -hmm. I grew up poor, and I'll always be afraid of it, she, because um, she says, I'm like the 500-pound uh, woman who lost all the weight but always feels fat. She goes, I grew up poor and will always be afraid of being poor. It's my chief paranoia. Mm -hmm. Cher said that. Cher. Wow. You know, and she's made it big. But what I'm telling you is that those fears that we learn, they're, they're a tradition in our families. You know, so our families teach us to be afraid uh, of uh, thinking about our money, thinking, making decisions, mm -hmm. uh, learning, getting money savvy. Uh, we we are socialized into that. And so those are things that we have to unlearn. We have to unlearn them, get rid of them, sweep them aside because it's a new day. You know, you were taught this by your grandmother or your mother. Well, they were using rotary phones. You're now on a cell phone. <laughs> the information changes, you and know? This is, this is so powerful, Connie, because I think it's it's important to get women aware, number one, of like, what is what is possible now? Like, and what is what is the state of things now? Like how, if, if left unchecked, if left kind of how things are going, a lot of women have this stuff that they've been carrying for a long time that doesn't serve them. So let's like really start to bust that open. You're already giving us some great, you know, new perspectives and, and shifts that the women who are listening can step into. So before we go any further, because this is all gold, I want to go back into your journey, Connie, and talk about how we got to where we are today. You know, like what was it about your journey that made you say, I'm going to be the hot money coach, a.k.a. the big ass bag lady? <laughs> all right. All right. I love it. Well, you know, I uh, worked for many years in corporate. Uh -huh. And while I was doing it, um, I was raising two children as a single mom. No child support from either dad. Uh, because, again, we're seen as the earth mother. So, you know, you have a good job, so you handle everything. You handle the raising of the child and, and you know, and all that. And so um, it was tough. And it was tough. I made it tough on myself as well because I chose to put my children into private schools. And I only had one income. But the only thing I thought I could give them was a great education, uh, you know, because I thought, I, you know, I may not ever leave them a huge fortune. But, you know, I can leave them an education that, that's going to serve them and, and, uh, and so forth. So I really put all my efforts and my money into that. So we always lived on a very tight little budget, you know, and did so until my, uh, until my kids, you know, grew up. And my children are 11 years apart, so I had two only children, wow. you know. So one was growing up and already in high school. The other one was little, you know. So that was another struggle. Child care, let me tell you. One of the things that I learned and that I, on my research that I've done lately, is that child care is a whole other entity apart from uh, child support. Mm -hmm. Child care is a huge dent to any woman who's raising children uh, aside from child support. So anyway, on my journey, um, I got to a point where I got old. Okay, in corporate America, I, I grew up in Silicon Valley and worked all my life in Silicon Valley in high tech. So I was I went from being in making little widgets. I started off in a uh, you know big big worldwide company where I was making little widgets to put together the big mainframes. That's how far back I go. I'm telling you history, and uh, and then uh, eventually I became uh, an admin and then a manager all inside this company. 
and uh, and I left in after seven years of managing 24 um, admin women in different parts of the buildings that were there. And uh, so then I got downsized. They offered me a package and I had to leave. And so then I had to put it to use all of the knowledge that I had built there. So I found that I was hired by temp agencies to uh, turn around businesses that were in the red. And somehow, I don't know how, because all of us have gifts that we don't know where they come from. I found it really easy. I just did it. You know, I would turn companies around and make them profitable. You know, and I I don't know how, you know, I just, (laughs) you know, it's just in me, you know, I'm looking at all the little details and everything and uh, doing processes and procedures. But um, then after a while uh, of working, I went into technical recruiting and so forth. uh, And it was great. Um, You know, I love technical recruiting, but I got old. In, tech, in, in Silicon Valley, once you, and, and typically, I will say, because my research shows this, by the time a woman reaches 48, she has peaked. She, her, her earnings years have peaked. That's it. You're going to only go down. So, I mean, honestly, that's another reason that, you know, I thought money is the partner that women have to have at their, joined at their hip throughout their working career. Yep. Uh, so it's so a 48 or so that's when I got downsized you know it was t- it was just predictable it's all get out wow so, uh, then I did other jobs after that about 10 years worth I, I worked at other in other fields and, and so forth but um, basically then uh, when I lost my last corporate job um, and by now I'm I'm 63 you know so I am 63 a recession hits. Uh, I lose my job. That leads to bankruptcy and losing my home. All of that at 63, starting over at 63. Dang. Come. And then, um, then my mom, uh, my late mom, uh, needed needed to be cared for. So mm-hmm. I couldn't continue working. Uh, my brother and I shared. Uh, the the you know the privilege of caring for our mom until she passed and then all that time I had been working I thought all these things had been I had time to percolate on all of these things that we're talking about right now about women and and even and myself as the prime example of hey I have made a lot of failures in my life if I failed to cover one money mistake I'll be shocked you know, I made them all because I had no formal training. We we're not trained on money. Mm-hmm. We're not trained on money literacy. We're not trained on money savvy. We're not trained on any of the ways that we can make our lives easier by having that relationship, very personal, intimate relationship with our money. I didn't know I had a relationship with money. And I've been, and I've been earning money since I was 19. 19 and not having you know just having the money flow in flow out flow in flow out and i thought you know there's a point in time even at 63 when you have to start thinking strategically and start thinking about hey what am i doing here i have to start now doing the smart stuff and i did you know i as soon as i had turned you know had to do bankruptcy i started i became a saving machine i became a saving machine. I paid off my car. I, I did everything that I needed to do. Uh, and in two years, I was out of it and everything. But but I became aggressive. I became just like, you know, my children were grown up. They, they launched beautifully and, and everything. So, so they were good. I had to now concentrate on me and my heart's desires. And the other thing, is that women do not put themselves first. Hmm. So even if they have adult children, they think of them as the little tiny babies that they brought home. You know, they don't think of them as adults who are now who now should be launched and taking care of themselves so that you can take care of yourself. Now dreams, you know, I had dreamed for the last 10 years hmm. of going to Paris. You know, because I love, I love traveling. I've been to Rome and Spain and Portugal and Mexico and Italy. Um, but I hadn't gone to Paris yet. 
And so I thought, you know, um, I'm just going to keep it at the top of my mind. Somehow I'm going to get to Paris. Well, eight months ago, the opportunity through my coach, my business coach said, oh, I'm going to Paris. I said, and you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me. <laughs> you know, what the heck? You yeah. know, she goes, well, we're going again in October. I said, okay, I'm in. I'm in. And I tell you, I went to Paris and it was it just fabulous. It was a fabulous experience. And, and I thought, so much beauty, so much culture, so much wonderful, wonderfulness, food, everything. But I thought, you know, this is what women put on the back burner. Mm. Women put all of that accessing beauty and, and culture and all the things that are wonderful. Those belong to someone else. They don't belong to you. Selfish, isn't it? Isn't it selfish? It's a selfish thing to do to want these things mm. for yourself. And, and so I said, you know, uh, it's not selfishness. It's enlightened self-interest. Yes. You know, it's enlightened self-interest that you are participating in and that you have every right mm. to. Now, why do I call myself the badass bag lady? I want to tell you that, too. Yes, yes, tell us. Because, because as, we, as I was going through trying to figure out, hey, you know, I am a women's wealth coach. But I also have this crazy streak in me, you know, this wild woman uh, kind of thing. And I thought, but what is, what is my vision with that? I thought, you know, women are terrified of the bag lady. The bag lady, you know, retirement means the bag lady, maybe. Mm-hmm. If you, and, or, or, you know, you're earning a million, millions and millions of dollars like Cher, and she's afraid of the bag lady. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to turn that around. I thought, you know, I want to turn that upside down. My vision and my dream is that women, because we're always with, loaded up with grocery bags anyway, right? Yep. Those grocery bags should be loaded up with prosperity and abundance and pouring out with cash <laughs> and with savings, stocks, bonds, paid off mortgage deeds. Yes. That. That's the vision I have. And of women doing this, carrying this proudly mm. um, with no apologies, no embarrassment, no guilt. Mm. Because all of these are things that we've also been conditioned in. Yeah. And so so I thought, badass bag ladies. I want the world to, to be full of badass bag ladies, you know? Prosperous, abundant, living out their dreams, their heart's desires, and and going for it. Because this is your life. This is yeah. our life. And um, got to go for it. That's right. Got to go yeah. all all in. And all I love in. I love how your journey like really you saw the contrast of what it was like to kind of just play the traditional role of of being a single mom, raising those kids and like just getting by. You know, I don't I don't think in this life we're meant to just get by. We're meant for abundance. We're meant for prosperity. We're meant for huge wealth and dreams and yeah. travels and adventures and anything that we set our mind and our heart to. So I love that. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, I will also go back into my journey is that I grew up in a shack in the middle of an orchard in San Jose when San Jose was filled with orchards. And I grew up, you know, we grew up, I was, you know, my father was an immigrant from Mexico. My mother was Mexican-American, but born here. And we just, you know, we lived very, very uh, humbly, humble. It was a very humble thing. And when you're in that kind of a circumstance, it's difficult to learn how to dream. Mm, It's difficult to come out of that uh, place that that is survival only, that is always constant money worries. My parents, I tell you, World War III money actually was uh, the cause of World War III in my home. From the time I was little until the time I left home after high school. Wow. It was just such a volatile subject. Emotion. I tell you, money is one of the most emotional subjects, topics. It's it's like your skin. It's like yeah. your skin is, you know, been touched by something, you know, it's it's emotional. So your heart, your your thoughts, your heart, and your body. Yeah. are participants in your money experience. Mm. If something happens, say some some horrible money thing happens, where does it hit you? Your gut? Mm. Your back? 
Mm. You know, your where does it hit you? It will hit you somewhere in your body. It's yeah. powerful. So it's visceral. It's emotional. Yep. It's you know mental. All of those things. I grew up in a little tiny, tiny, tiny little pod of not being able to think about money because it was so dangerous. You didn't dare mention it. Uh, if, if you did, you know, dangerous things could happen to you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so that's another part of the journey. But those are the things that were traditioned within our family too. Mm. We have mm. to get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, and then society gives us another load of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, which is that I'll keep it real. Yep. Uh, keep yeah. Keep real. And that is that um that you know, you have to wait for a a, a male to come mm. along and uh he will be your uh you know, your rescuer. He's gonna sugar take, daddy. Sugar daddy is gonna <laughs> take care of everything. You don't have to worry about a thing. That is such a bunch of bull. And yep. it's not true. And there I'll tell you, all guys there. Sorry, you know, but there are some men who are just as lousy. They're not that good with money. They're yep. not good. So we're we're giving men the whole, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of a false kind of, or it's an illusion yeah. that they are the ones who are going to be the problem solvers of right. our uh, situations. You know, they're right. not. They're yeah. not. What comes from you and you've got, you know, Every one of us has it, but with a woman, she's doing it already and has not recognized it. Yeah. She's the chief financial officer of her life. Yeah. She's paying her bills, her rent, her groceries, not only for herself, maybe, but for her children, mm -hmm. or if she's married for her whole family. And yet she doesn't recognize that. See, mm -hmm. because we're conditioned to not look at ourselves and our strengths. We have strengths that we're working every single minute. So, and then we're doing the creative things, you know, we're creating, um, we create magic in this world. We create it. I, I always did. I never knew that I did until Christmas, every Christmas when my kids would go to bed. I mean, I would stay up all night wrapping gifts so that Santa had come, you know, Santa had come. I, just, I got candy and I threw it all over the place, you know, all the floor and everywhere mm. on their drawers and everything. So when they woke up, there was magic. Yeah. There was a magic thing. What, women are the creators of that kind of magic, mm. you know, for others. But who creates that magic for you? You know, if and if no one is, then you have to allow yourself to create that magic for your own self. Mm. You know, and that comes from being well positioned with your money, knowing where you are with that partner. That's your that's your BFF. That's your partner, yep. you know. How are you uh, communicating with it? How are you interacting with it on an ongoing basis so that both of you are on board together so that that trip to Paris is going to happen right now? You know, you're going to get that ticket and you're going. And, and so those are the, the heart's desires then have to be voiced because you have a money voice. That's right. You have a money voice. You have a money heart. You have a money mindset. Hmm. But you have to be able to release that voice, mm. to voice those money desires, those money dreams, because that's the only way they're going to come true. So how, how do we get started with that, Connie? Do we just journal about it? Do we speak it? Do we have to talk to a coach? What, what's the, the well, process? You know, for I help women to start naming those things by, uh, there's processes that I have, there's a worksheets that I have and, and so forth uh, that I work with women on because you have to start naming those. And, yeah. and but one of the most powerful ways to do it is to write it because writing, you know, imprints it in you, yep. you know, and also to be able to talk to someone about it. So, you mm. know, so I have mentored women in this, you know, um, women who are fearful and women who have had doubts about themselves and so forth. So we, we worked through it because it is a bit of a process. It's not a difficult process, but you know, it's emotional. Yeah. It's emotion. So we, you know, I won't, I won't, uh, you know, avoid saying that, you know, it's going to be emotional. So we're going to work through it. Sometimes we do it in a, just a very short one week kind of a thing like right. i have money challenge that i do that's for the people who are 
only wanting to do a little bit of bite size because they're they're not quite sure yet where they are and what they want to do with mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. where they are. And then I have some other four week, you know, uh, things that I do. Uh, so that, and then I also have a pick your brain kind of thing where if you just want to do an, a 90 minute thing, talk to me and, 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 you know, maybe that'll be enough for you. It just depends on where you are on your own journey. Mm. So, uh, but I think that uh, the thing is to do something. Yeah. One of those, get started, get started and doing something and that means you know i mean you could reach out to me but you know if you're already working with someone else that's fine but i think working with someone who has stepped in every cow pie there is has value value, you know and that's why i say i made all the mistakes for you so you know let's talk about it because you you you're earlier in the journey you don't have to step in those cow pies you know i've already done it for you so you know so let's talk about how i can help you avoid those yeah and and then you know let me just give you another little insight about uh i i have friends who are still in the hr business Uh the industry and so I was talking to a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I said, well, you know, um, are, are the women in, in your company um, participating in their 401ks? I'm, I'm just curious, you know. She said, oh, Connie, it makes me crazy. She goes, it makes me, she's a director, so she knows all about all the, the benefits and everything. She said, you know, we have four hundred one k that gives one dollar match for every dollar you put in, up to five thousand dollars. Wow. She said, "And do you know I have talked to women and she's in my company here, and they're in their forties and fifties, so they're not youngsters. Not they're not old, but <laughs> spring they're not chickens. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're, they've been on the journey, all, 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 <laughs> and yet they refuse to participate. She says they're leaving thousands of dollars on the table. Now wow. the badass bag lady says, never leave money on the table. That's you right. have to be looking. If you're in corporate right now, you have to look at everything that's available and take advantage of every bit of it. Mm. You know, and then if you're not in corporate, if you're an entrepreneurial woman, what have you done to set up your step IRA or, you know, or any other kind of vehicle, an instrument that's going to help you put your money to work? It's not mm. just about you working for your money. You have to make your money work for you. Yeah. So that means it has to be out there getting some compound interest yeah. and so forth. That's how it takes care of you. But you have to talk to your money. You have to relate to that money. You have to know that it's floating around you. It's flowing. Mm. It's dynamic. It's sexy. It's gorgeous. You know, but you and you're sexy and gorgeous and wonderful, too. So when two of those hit each other, sparks fly. Magic. Magic happens. So that's what has to happen. But if you're just, you know, out there, you know, oblivious. That's what I'm trying to get women to do. Come, let's talk, you know, and let me help you get out of the oblivion part Mm. and come to life. Come to life in this relationship because that relationship, you know, money is like a jealous suitor. Mm. Money is a jealous suitor because if you don't give it the attention, you know, it comes, it comes calling, you know, it's calling all the time. And so, you know, but if you, if it comes calling and you go, yeah, 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 you know, uh, I'll, I'll I'll handle you later. Talk to you later. Whatever. It's gonna say, you know, there's a lady two houses down mm. who really really likes me. <laughs> and I'm going over there because she's gonna open the door to me. She's gonna yeah. welcome me into her world, mm. and and we're gonna rock and roll together. You know, we're gonna have a great you know life together. Yeah. So that's that money will not only leave you, mm. but actually uh, get even with you. It will mm. get even with you because you've not been showing it the love, the attention, and it's a living thing. You know, it's a living thing. So, so is there is there any habits or exercises you'd recommend to strengthen that relationship with money and, and really love it and connect deeper with it? 
I think that one of the biggest things that, that you can do, and I know it does not sound sexy at all. Sexy is not it. But mm. money talks in numbers. Mm. Make an appointment with your bank statement every single week. It's t- that money is communicating with you through that avenue. And, and we can tend to avoid that. Yep. So we tend to avoid it. And for some people, you know, it's online. So for some people, it can be that you'll need to, for about a month, uh, go into there every single day and yeah. see the flow of where your money is coming and going. And does yeah. that make you happy? Are some of those outflows making you happy or not? Mm. Because you have a chance to change that right then and there. Mm. So that is one thing. The other thing I would really recommend is that for one week only, because it might be a little bit much for somebody, Yep. for one week only, deal only in cash, cash only for one week to pay your gas, mm. your groceries, uh, all of that. See how it feels yeah. when that cash is leaving your hot little hand and going to somewhere else. <laughs> <You know? laughs> See what kind of anxiety, because you know, it's become too easy for us to use ATMs yeah. and to use that card. It becomes not real. Mm. This is real. Now let's, let's, you know, so give yourself $300 or $200, whatever, whatever your expenses for lunches. Mm. For, you know, dinners, for the movies, yeah. for, you know, whatever expenses and fees you're going to be using one week, see how it feels, you know, when that money is leaving you because it's emotional, it's emotional. And when you're mm. done and you're down to that last dollar, how does it feel? This is something that you need to be writing down every day as, you know, as mm. Monday, it's leaving this much money left to left my hand Mm -hmm. Tuesday this much money oh now I'm here on Friday and Saturday's here and I've got one dollar how do I feel how do I feel Mm -hmm. you know this is this is an exercise that's really valuable the Mm -hmm. other thing I would say is um because money has become so uh unreal um gather your change up gather your change any change you've got in your pocket, gather it and put it into your uh, a jar or you know a, a glass or whatever, and see how much money at the end of the week you you might have gathered up just in change yeah. because that change is real that that money is real. So the, those are some suggestions That's I great. have until I you it. get to really digging deeper. Those are things that that can be done immediately if yeah. right. Away. Yeah, and, and you know, another I love that you said change because I think a lot of people can minimize the value of change. A penny, you know, if you see a penny on the ground, that's like the universe, God, source, creator, whatever you want to call it. Like that's alignment of abundance, and celebrate that. When you can celebrate those small amounts, those pennies, those dimes, those quarters, those dollars, those five dollars, twenty dollars, whatever it is, when you can celebrate receiving that, discovering it, having it come into your bank account, whatever, and just like feel it that will attract more and you know one of the other things that i would say because we get to gratitude you're talking yeah. also about the gratitude yes um factor which is just so important because i think that until i started practicing gratitude on a moment to moment basis not just daily I, daily is too much you know, daily you say daily that's a long period of time right but, but if you say moment to moment, now mm. I'm going to tell you, okay, this morning I woke up on a bed. That's mm. money. Yeah. That bed had sheets on it. Money. Mm. It had pillow, pillowcases. That's money. Yeah. You know, and then I got up, took a shower, had running water. That's money. Nice towels. That's money. You know creams and all of my stuff that I, my makeup, money. Then I went into the kitchen and made coffee. That's money. Yes, I have a pantry and a fridge full of food, money. 
Mm. We don't look at the flow of how money is in our lives, how we're living with it right now. It, you know, the, it, everything that we use to beautify our home, money, mm. you know, and yet we do not look closely. So every day I say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful cup of coffee. It's beautiful. When I open my, my window, my back window, I can look out on the pool that's outside of my balcony. Pool. It's beautiful. The palm trees. You know, San Diego, you've lived here. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, you know, there's so much beauty and beautiful things to be grateful for. But until we use that as our baseline mm. for that money relationship, uh, Again, we're in oblivion. We're not living to the fullest because that gratitude opens you up. That gratitude just breaks you open mm -hmm. to receive in a way that that is new every day. It's new every day. It's a renewal every day. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what gratitude and money and abundance and prosperity they're they're all interconnected and they're huge. And they're beautiful and they're blessing. Yes, they are. I love it. Connie, this is, this is so powerful. I love the gratitude as a an act to, to call in more, right? It's like when you are grateful for what you have, you receive more of it. And it's all around us in everything. This computer, this microphone, these, this light that's on my face. You know, it's like all of it is is a source of from money. And, and the thing is that, you have already received a lot of it. Yes, yes. You know, because it's in front of you right now. So that you know that 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 there's no limit really. There's plenty mm. for everybody. There's plenty. There how big is the sky? That's how big gratitude is and how big yep. abundance and prosperity are. Mm. That's how big they are. And we just have to open our hearts to it and uh and no, you know, another thing that I think that um, that I have changed with that is that, you know, people say, oh, money is the source of all evil. And I say money is the source of many, many, many blessings. Because mm -hmm. how can you bless others if you are not blessing yourself first? Man. You are not. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. If you want to, women, women especially want to benefit so many other people. Yeah. So, you know, you cannot do philanthropy from an empty purse. Nope. You have to have those big bags, at bad, bad, you know, bags <laughs> of money, bad, bag lady, bags <laughs> of prosperity, so that you can share it with an open heart. That's part of the gratitude for this life. Yes. They can share it. You can, you know, you might have a favorite charity. You might have a favorite, you know, niece or nephew that you want to put through college, or yeah. you have a, a, a fur baby that you want, you know, you want to adopt more fur babies. Whatever it is, those are the sources. You become now the fountain, mm -hmm. the fountain mm -hmm. of all of those blessings to someone else, and maybe blessing other people that you will never meet yeah. through your through your donations to and contributions to things that are near your heart. Yeah. So it's a big picture. It's a whole mm. entire picture. It's not just, it's not limited. Mm. And I, I love that it's, it's like you said, circling back, enlightened self-interest, yes. right? Being interested in yourself and not viewing it as selfish and wrong, but rather, hey, I get to be abundant and prosperous and, and receive what is already my birthright to be prosperous, to be abundant and, right. and activate that because it's already all around me. It's just a question of am I open to receiving it and owning yes. it or am I pushing it away based on my thinking and my habits and how I've treated it. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. And I think that, you know, uh, recognizing it and, and welcoming it, I think that yeah. um, we are not trained to that either. We are not trained. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I talk about when I talk to women, that we are not trained to, uh, to do this guilt-free. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, yeah. the guilt that comes with it. So, yeah. so I think that, you know, uh, we... You know, we wind up um, having to unlearn. Yeah. There's an unlearning that has to take place, as I mentioned Definitely. before. 
sweep all of the garbage aside, the emotional and all that other stuff. And it takes a bit of time, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, you know, right. it's a process that, that we work on, you yeah. know, several months, you know, and um, so that so that you can feel good, so you can mm. feel comfortable with it, so that you it feels, you know, you're, you're comfortable in your skin when it comes to money, you know, and now you're ready to uh, to step up your game to to you know increase those dreams. Why not have you know? I think have a huge bunch of dreams. It doesn't cost you any more money to have them. And say you only meet twenty five percent of those dreams. My God, you got twenty five percent of those dreams coming true. Mm. Yay! You know. Yeah. Yay. You know. I love it. Wow, yeah. Connie, this is this is gold. I want to really highlight the woman or women out there who really get to take these next steps. Like, what what are they going through right now, and what what should they do to take those next steps with you? Where are they at in their finances and their mindset that you really specialize in connecting with them and serving these women? And what do they do next? Well, you know, one of the things I would say is that first you have to kind of know a little bit about your own self. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know. The first thing is to find out what your money archetype is. Mm. And, the, and women can do that by going into my website, which is www.hotmoneyrelationship.com mm. and taking the challenge quiz. You know, mm. this is the quiz that's going to give you, there's eight archetypes and you're going to find out where your baseline is. You know, this mm. is how I operate because everyone operates a little differently Go there first, and then, you know, then we can start working together in any manner that you think is best, maybe a little light touch, maybe a little deeper, you know, mm -hmm. next year, I'm going to be having a live retreat here in San Diego in, in May, and so, you know, as some people were better, you know, doing it live, so, mm -hmm. so there's all kinds of ways, but you can find out more about it on my uh, website. And take the quiz. I say take the, the you know, the bag lady challenge and uh, find out where you are on your archetype. And then we can start making some headway and working one on one together and getting you, getting you to where you want to be in your many relationship mm -hmm. and opening yourself up to receive, to receive and to know that you are very worthy and deserving. You have worked your little buns off to get more and better, do it, do it, join me. I'd love to talk with all these ladies that are out there. They all have a wonderful story to tell and, and, and I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Amen. Connie, I love this. This is gold. So they go to hotmoneyrelationship.com forward slash free dash resources forward slash quiz. That's how they can get access to that, right? That's right. Awesome. Beautiful. And social media, is there anywhere particular they, they can connect you or just search Connie Sands and they'll find you? Yeah. You know, I'm on Facebook, you know, I have hot money relationship page. So go there and check me out. I would love to have them connect with me there. Yes. I'm Beautiful. just excited, excited to, to talk to anyone who wants to talk to me about oh money gosh. and relationships and uh, being worthy to have it, to have mm. it because you deserve it. That's right. That's right. So for you listening or watching right now, send Connie a message. Let her know what your biggest takeaway was from this conversation and let her know what's what's the area of, of your money relationship and your money life that you're committed to growing. Just speak it into existence. Speak that heart's desire. That's the first step. And I can't think of a, a safer, more, more beautiful, loving space than to talk to Connie and share that with her. So definitely do that right now. And Connie, we're going to wrap this beautiful interview up with a bow. And it's going to be the final takeaway, the final 60 seconds of encouragement that someone out there, probably a woman, really needs to hear right now around money. What do you have to say to them, Connie? I have to say this. I think that, uh, you know, you deserve, you're worthy. You've been trained to maybe not think of, of yourself in that way, but you have a strength in you. You have diamonds in your heart and soul that have not been mined by you or anyone else. Don't be afraid of them. They're golden. They're sparkling. They're beautiful. They're you. So let's do it. Let's find all that 
all those diamonds that are within you and bring them out into the sunshine, into the world, so that you can start receiving as you deserve. Because you need to be in a hot money relationship and you're already in the relationship. So let's just enhance it. Bring it all out. I love it. Connie, you are a super woman. Thank you so much for bringing this this joy, this love, and this enlightenment about money to me and to our audience because it has been super valuable. Love the exercises. Love the shifts in the mindset. And you're doing beautiful work in the world and healing and helping and supporting a lot of women to create their best life ever. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Chris. I just appreciate it so much. Awesome. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon, okay? Yes. Thank you. Bye.